everybody ready to go? Or is everybody sleepy from after lunch? I can't hear you. All right. All right, so our next speaker is a writer who contributes to the Tindy Bog, uh, Popular Science, Hackaday, among others. And in his spare time, he uh, embraces his inner maker by posting videos to YouTube about his latest project. He, today, he's here to take us through his, this guy, his little personal strand beast. So please welcome to the Hackaday stage, Jeremy Cook. Well, uh, thanks so much for that intro, Brian. I guess I'll let uh, my uh, strand beast, I call it the clear crawler, introduce it to itself. Well, um, this is a video. All right, so there's my little clear crawler, um, just crawling around in the garage, floor of my garage. It's uh, 15 and a half inches in high, um, about 150 RPM motors, various things like that. Controlled by an NRF 24L01, remote control, and lots and lots of bearings, lots of gears. So. So that being said, let me go through how I um, made this. All right, there you go. So my talk is called Strand Beasts from Impossible Build to Dominating in My Garage. And these, these beasts have been in my garage for probably six years or so. Um, went from kind of, a, um, <clears throat> kind of a project that I thought I would never be able to do to something that, well, I've made at least six of them at this point. So you know, as far as me, like, like Brian said, I'm an engineer, experimenter, technical writer, somebody who has a, kind of a hard time telling people what I do when they ask me. Um, feature in Hackaday, and I've written there as well. And most importantly for here, I love making things. Um, the first first step in this was I got inspired. Um, somebody sent me a video of a guy named Teo Janssen, which you know, he made this incredible strand beast that walked around on the beach. And I just thought, you know, I saw that and I thought, well, you know, I can, I can maybe, maybe do something like that. Right? I thought, basically, I thought I'd never be able to do something like that. And as I thought about it more and more, I decided to just, just make one, one linkage, one leg. And the way these work is that you've got one, one linkage on the, um, on the center that actuates all these, all these legs through just linkages. So if you've got two, two motors, one on each side, you can drive it kind of like a tank. And what's shown here is, is four, four legs, and mine uses eight because with four, it just tends to, to buckle back and forth quite a bit. It, it's, it's not really that smooth, but um, you know, like I said, I tried. I thought, well, I can make one one leg. You know, that wasn't a big deal. And then I thought, well, I could make a, a base for this, and I could make three more. And then, well, I, I came to this. And as you can see, this is almost the size of a golf court cart. I never got this to quite work correctly. Um, you know, part of the reason I didn't have big enough motors on it, lots of friction, and it just, you know, I was just trying to do a precision instrument with very imprecise tools, which makes uh, Teo Janssen, his, his beast, you know, he made it out of PVC pipe, which I, I still don't know how to, he did it. I mean, it seemed amazing to begin with, but now that I've built several, it just seems almost impossible, especially under wind power. But this one seemed a little bit too big, and so, you know, what did I do? Instead of four legs, I made it with eight legs. And here's me and uh, my, my, my cousin trying to try it out and push it across the, the garage. Um, it broke soon after this, so it never quite worked the way I wanted. It's uh, cut out of MDF and it's very, very heavy. Um, yeah, and after that I decided to scale it down, made something I called this the Strand Mouse. Um, this actually worked pretty well. It's got a, 
a quadcopter as a controller. So, you know, as quadcopters are still seared differentially. So you can power all the motors up in the same, um, at the same amount and it'll go forwards. But if you change how much you're, you're giving to each motor, the thing will steer like a tank. And this did work for, for a while until it fell apart. Everything was, it was kind, of, kind of glued together. So this is, you know, the other two were too big. This is maybe a little bit too small. And then after that, I made one that was just right. And this one, to this day, it'll still work. It's, it's got a great linkage system. Um, the middle, it's got gears, so all the torque is transmitted down a central shaft rather than using like a, um, a camshaft mechanism like, like Teo's. And got to give a shout out to uh, uh, Joe, who goes to a hobby engineer. He, he, I think he's the one that came up with this um, central shaft mechanism. A really, really good design. Um, and after that, I decided to scale it up again, made something out of clear polycarbonate, called this one the Clear Walker. Um, really beautiful. Never got it to work quite as well as, as Teo Janssen would, uh, you know, as his beast. But um, then I tried to actually make a kit. This one ro launches rockets, which was, that was a lot, a lot of fun. And then finally, I came to the Clear Crawler. Um, this one, uh, somebody, um, Geek Mom Project, she came up with a name for this. I asked about that on Twitter. And, Shout out to her too. Um, but this one is clear polycarbonate, so it looks has the same look as the big the big clear walker, but it's um, you know small enough that I can get it to walk around really well, which I'll demonstrate in just a minute. Um, lessons th learned through this whole process: um, you know, bigger isn't always better. Um, big routed cutoff switch, which I'll show that a little later, is is awesome. I had a couple of those lying around, and I. Um, made that a big priority in the design, which is maybe a little bit uh, superfluous, I guess, <laughs> but it was really fun. Um, differential steering, not just for tanks, and then bearings, 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 bearings. You need all kinds of bearings for something like this. Just the, the torque, the, um, the friction just adds up just astronomically after a while. So this whole thing, it's got 88 thrust bearings, um, 11 per leg, and it could, it could even use some other bearings. I mean, you could probably put twice as many bearings on it, make it even better if you wanted to. You know, controls-wise, it's very simple. It's just two motors. One goes forward, the other goes forward, or whatever. And yeah, so that's, that's all it is. There's that big red switch I was talking about. Um, really love that. And it's functional, too, because you turn it on, and the, the driving motors can go. And you turn it off, and everything else is on. But the driving motors, there's no power to them. So you can diagnose stuff without having to worry about it crawling off the table on you. And if it does crawl away, you can you flip it off. So that's, that's nice. Um, there's the differential control method. You've got the, the one, one um, motor on the left side, one on the right. You know, just like a tank, both, goes, both go forward. It goes forward, both back, both back. Or then some combination will go left and, left and right. Um, there's a, another picture of the, one of the, uh, the leg linkages. Um, that's, that's basically acting as a central rotation there. So you've got uh, four of these per side and then four legs just going, going on and on. Um, yeah, I, th I think the clear polycarbonate really, really shows it off nicely. And this is all cut on a CNC router designed in the uh, a CAD system like, like AutoCAD. Uh, I guess a knockoff AutoCAD, <laughs> you'd call it. Um, yeah, 11 thrust bearings, there's another shot of that. And um, yeah, now it's time for the, uh, the demo. So let's, let's check it out. So you can see there, you know, one thing I've got, I've got a pivot on it, it goes left and right, down, up and down, and then it's got a little, little um, beeper on it too, which you, oh, I guess you can hear it, so. Yeah, and then if I, I press forward on the control, it goes forward backwards and then I can do right, left, and then let's see. If it, if it goes forward too fast, it has a hard time because the legs tend to jam up a little bit. So let's see if I can get it to not walk off the table. There we go. So, yep, there it goes. So. Yeah, it almost did that. You know, I get, I get asked the question sometimes, is this good off-road? And it's, it's very much not. It, it can simulate a wheel pretty well because the linkage system is designed in such a way that 
each, each foot will travel up and then go just down flat for a while. So I've, I've found that four, four legs on each side will simulate, I guess, two wheels, just like a car, pretty, pretty well. Um, but one, one is not enough, and three I, I haven't tried because that's just, you know, the work just adds up astronomically after a while. So, um, yeah, I guess, uh, do you guys have any questions about how I made this or anything about the, the design? Anything I can answer? Yes. Or, I have yes. Question, do you collaborate with DOE also, or is there any, uh, uh, like, do you share insights? Um, I'd, I'd say it's kind of a um, unauthorized collaboration. So, so he, he came up with the linkage lengths for each of the legs. Like, like that's entirely his design. I, although, I guess I did maybe make a few modifications, but he's, you know, I, I give him all the credit for that. Where I kind of came in was making the, um, the actual design on CAD and adapting it to a motorized system rather than a wind-powered device. Uh, so, yeah, that's the, I guess that's the extent of our collaboration. <laughs> so, um, there's another question over? Uh, so, polycarbonate, the, um, the legs themselves, they're made um, a quarter inch for the main parts of the legs. And then some of the supporting members, you know, the, the part on the top, like right, right there, that just kind of for, kind of to, um, support the electronics, that's a eighth of an inch. And then the, um, the larger gears, I believe that's uh, just under half an inch. I, I made these pretty large so that the, the gears on the, um, the driving gears wouldn't kind of fall off, if that makes any sense. I, I tried that before. In fact, on the bigger Clearwalker, it did have that problem. I knew it would just kind of, if the gears didn't mesh just correctly, they'd kind of um, fall off of each other. So. Yeah, so that was, that's the answer to that. Yes? How does friction affect your choice of materials? Is it Sure, I mean, I'd, I'd say the biggest thing on this, uh, the question was how did friction design, or how did friction affect my design choices? I, I'd say the biggest thing was just adding bearings after bearing after bearing. It, it um, yeah, I mean, that, you know, that adds up price-wise after a while. When I made it out of, um, MDF, I actually put some carbon powder on some of the gears, which, which helped, it, helped it reduce friction on that. I, I could probably use that on this too, but so far it's yet to be, yet to be necessary. That and I guess I, the, the more friction I can reduce, the smaller motors I can use too, so faster it would go, I guess. Um, yeah, anything else uh, I can answer? So, yeah, well, uh, thanks so much for, for watching. Hope you, hope you enjoy the presentation.